What is going on guys? Welcome to your 16th HTML5 tutorial and let's go ahead and just no introduction. Let's just go ahead and continue these tutorials. So the very first thing I want to mention is we're going to be starting with this new div tag and literally it's called new div tag. Now see this div tag? It has two things inside it. It has a section and it has pretty much a news article so basically whenever you have something that you want position inside it you need to treat it as a box so go over and we already treated the main body as a box and also the big wrapper as a box so since this div tag has children aka boxes inside it we need to treat this as a box so just remember that if it has boxes in inside it the parent has to be a box simple enough so let's just go ahead and say new div and the very first property is that I'm just gonna go ahead and copy one of these display webkit box because it has boxes inside it the parent has to be a box remember that one of your favorite quotes from Bucky Roberts so the only thing I want to do after this is check it out right now basically we're saying okay this box is gonna contain all of this crap right here however unlike our website layout right now we don't want these things to be positioned one under each other like they are right now we don't want them to be positioned vertically we want them to be positioned horizontally I want one column for this stuff and another column for this little news article basically like we laid out our website before so in order to do that we need to hit webkit box orient in I think that's how you spell horizontal I guess I'll find out the hard way and basically what I'm saying is okay now the children that are inside this box right here they are gonna be laid out side by side instead of one on top of each other simple enough so now let's go ahead and take a look at what we have inside here we have this section which is pretty much the main section so let me just go ahead and copy that so make sure I don't type it wrong and the main section is this crap right here so in notepad hop over to my CSS file and hit main section and for main section the very first thing I want to do is I want to just add a border so border equals one pixel solid blue and this will show you guys easily what's going on whenever we uh, test out our website and the other thing I want to do is I want to make this section flexible so in order to do that I don't even know if I change this property already but I might as well talk to you guys about it again if I did webkit box and I already did this I remember flex one and remember whenever we have the property of one in here it pretty much means that this box is going to be flexible now I don't even know if I said this but by flexible I just mean that it's going to change in size dynamically depending on how big our browser is so there you go now let me just go ahead and add some margin so everything is a bunch up together I'll add uh, margin of 20 pixels and I might as well add some padding too or those articles are gonna look a little funny of 20 pixels as well now the cool thing about this is even though we have an overall size of a thousand pixels for our website since this is flexible we don't need to worry about a bunch of complicated math about what size this section is going to be what size the other section is going to be because it's going to fit dynamically so that's another reason that I absolutely love this flexible box model according excuse me compared to the traditional box model so after main section what did we call the other thing side news so let me go ahead and copy this and pound side news now the first thing I'm going to do for side news is I might as well add a border and we'll make this one border one pixel solid red now this is just so you guys can visually see but another thing I want to do after this is I don't want this one to be flexible as well because this is a common technique and you guys probably want to pay attention to what I'm going to say next if we have two flexible things inside a box then it's not going to know how big to make one and how small to make the other so a common technique in web development is make 
if let's say you have two columns in a table, make one of those columns a fixed width, and then you want the other column to change dynamically depending on how big the browser is. So if your browser is 200 pixels wide and one column is 100 pixels, then the other column is going to be 100 pixels. However, if your browser is 500 pixels wide and that column is 100, then that other one is going to grow to 400 pixels. So column one is going to grow and shrink, but column two is going to stay the same. And also, if you have ads on your website, you can't grow or shrink those. You need those to be a fixed size. However, the content or the text, it can grow or shrink. So I know I talked a lot about that and it took me like a minute, but it's definitely important, something to take note of. So since this section is flexible, it's going to be on the side of this section. We need this one to be a fixed width. So in order to do that, just go ahead and set the width equal to, I don't know, something like 220 pixels. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some margins and back and uh, excuse me paddings to you know make it look a little better. So everything isn't so bunched up. So margin, I'm just going to go ahead and change this to I don't know 20 pixels. And actually, I'm going to change this to that'll look a little bit better. And for the padding, uh, let me boost this up a bit, like 30 pixels. Should give it some nice space. And for the background, I think we added that nice light blue color. So I'll do the same. 66CCCC. Sounds like someone's name, CC. So after this, we might as well go ahead and take care of the footer right now. And I believe we called the footer. Huh, the footer. How clever is that? So pound the footer. Now for the footer, what we need to do is we don't need to clear anything first and foremost. Remember in the traditional box model I cleared the footer and that was because we had stuff floating left and right well right now we don't have any float properties so we don't need to use clear at all clear is only useful whenever you're floating stuff around your screen so what you want to do is text align center and this will make sure that the text is centered on a screen because whenever you have a footer it's nice to center your text it just looks a little bit better and for padding let me go ahead and add 20 pixels on here and I believe we added a border top of uh, I'm gonna go ahead and boost the pixels up two pixels solid green not grin green and what this is gonna do is let me make sure I got all my semicolons and colons okay good to go now let me go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and take a look at our website right now. So refresh this and as you can see, okay, it kind of looks the same as the website before. However, check this out. And I actually want to, yeah, I'll go ahead and, uh, hold on, got an itch in my ear. Oh yeah, that's a spot right there. Okay, now check this out. Unlike before, where everything is fixed, and we needed to, you know, use math to make sure we fit perfectly in those 1,000 pixels, check it out. This box to the right is going to be, what was it, 220 pixels. Now, this is always going to stay 220 pixels. However, this box over here is going to change dynamically based on the size of our browser. So let me go ahead and shrink this browser and check it out that box is either shrinking so if you were looking at this on a smartphone this website will look perfect still or if you're looking at it on a big widescreen TV looking computer our website is still gonna look awesome so that is the beauty of flexible box models that you can pretty much grow or shrink your website depending on the size of the browser and you don't need to use any weird CSS tricks any programming any math it does it all for you automatically and also I don't know if you guys can see this border or not but the border of this main header and also the navigation bar these are changing as well now again even though that they change dynamically if you are looking at this on a monitor the size of like a pencil it's gonna look really weird whenever you squeeze everything real tight together but no monitors are ever that small so I just want to show you guys this that the flexible box model pretty much puts your website in boxes that can either grow or shrink dynamically now again I want to talk about this just for a little bit longer a common and awesome technique is to keep one of these columns fixed and the other one dynamic. So then you can have stuff like ads in here, stuff that needs to be a set size, and the content that can change 
can either grow or shrink according to the display. So that is the technique. In the next couple tutorials, I'm going to be showing you guys some even more tricks and showing you guys how to make this website look even better. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.